Okay, I've, uh, I want to show something here. I dry all of my uh, short incision deer capes on uh, wire fur stretchers. And uh, I was given a suggestion by Mr. Keith Daniels, my tanner, uh, an Arlington Cape in Arlington, Ohio, is because these things do rust from the salt on the, um, the salt that's on the capes. It will make them rust. And he told me, so, you know, the rust can stain the white markings on a deer's face. And it can leave a, a rust line on the muzzle. So he says, uh, why don't you get yourself some rubber tubing, rubber or plastic tubing, and uh, cut a slot, you know, all the way around the tubing and put it at least over the tip. So a while back, I had bought some of this great surgical rubber tubing from Matuska Supply. And this stuff is terrific. I bought a little machine and I had a bunch of it left over. And he sells it mostly. This, is, this can also be used if you pin one end of it on one part of a mannequin that you are assembling. Pull it around tight because it has great stretch. Great stretch. Pull it around tight and pin it around the other side. It will hold a mannequin or a head form together while you pour foam into it. Okay. Uh, so I had lots of this left over. I have several more of these wire uh, fur stretchers and uh, I put it over the top. Now this is going to be used also when I salt the otter. And this part goes up into the face and it will stretch it out. The nice thing about these things, when a cape or a skin is on them, um, in the fur industry they air dry the skins. They don't do anything to them. But for taxidermy, if you case skin all your mammals and salt them down real well, put this up into the animal's skin, which you'll see I will do that with the otter, and uh, hang it up on a, um, uh, a hook, hang, hang it from the, oh, it hangs over my salt rack. It allows it to drain downward, but also the fact that there's nothing in the middle allows the air to circulate fully around the skin as opposed to it laying on a salt rack and you have to pick it up, shake it out, resalt it again. Generally speaking, a cape will dry overnight and complete, be completely drained and ready to ship. I do salt them a second time just out of force of habit. Uh, I bring it down, I leave it on the stretcher, I scrape off and rub off all the old salt, resalt it while it's on the stretcher, hang it up. I'm not too concerned about the bottom part collecting rust, uh, but the top, putting a, a, a rubber or plastic tubing over the top is a great idea. That's a wonderful idea. Uh, so this is just a little tip I wanted to share uh, that someone shared with me. And we're just, uh... okay, I've pulled the otter out of the fridge. And you can see by looking at his face alone, at uh, his nose area here that I wrapped with wet cotton is nice and moist, very nice and moist. The lips around the top are very moist. The lips around the bottom have gotten a lot of moisture put back into them overnight. Here are the hind feet all stretchy and wonderful again. I mean, <laughs> I can, when I turn these, I, uh, when I invert them inside out again, I will be checking for the bones uh, left in the toes if there are any. Uh, but you can see marvelous what the Chemo 4 solution did for the front paws. And then I wrapped the cotton around the tip of the tail and let's see what we've got here. We've got a little magic happening. Oh yeah, yeah. The tip of the tail is fully, fully, uh, completely and utterly rehydrated, okay? So I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna open the rest of the tip of the tail out, to open, and I'm gonna pull that tailbone out of there. I can actually feel the skin slipping around the tailbone. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, tip of the tailbone out right now. 
Let's just grab a, uh, let's grab a nice sturdy hemostat. Grab hold of the bone tip that's exposed here. All right, these are really made for right-handed people after all. What a shame. I'm going to grab the tip of the bone. And I'm going to lock it down and now I think I'll I think I'll open the tip with with the scalpel. Yeah. Let me hold this down. Go ahead and Put the very, very, very tip of the tail, and now work this out a little bit. Yep. Let's get one of the knives. Let's get my old, old rugged Henkel's knife. Carve around the bone. I just want to loosen the bone up. So I can extract it. There we go. And get this tendon that's attached here. Get beneath the tendon, between the tendon and the skin. Right, let's try another knife. There we go. All right, now be very, very careful here. Okay, tendon is lifted away. All right. Now we'll grab the remaining bone with the hemostat. Clamp it down tight. Let's see if we can just simply remove this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and carve it out. I'm going to remove it by cutting it out. I don't want to pull. I do not want to rip the tip of the tail off at this point. Now, the bottom side is very, very, very rehydrated. But the top side of the bone is still showing a little darkness in color, which means it's still a bit dry and not real prone to being pulled out of the tip of the tail. So I'll walk it out or work it out. I need to hold the tail down while I do this. Hold the tail down with one finger. Hold the hemostat with another. Put some opposing pressure on the hemostat to pull it away from the tail as I cut it free. And here it comes. So the last joint or two of the tail. And there it is. The very last. of the tail vertebrae. The very last two tail vertebrae, there are two here. There are actually two. But they're out of the tail now. I will see a glue these to the tip of the tail on the carcass. Okay, I've got everything here I need to start this, uh, this step. I've got my scalpel. My Number six, stainless steel scalpel handle with a 23, number 23 blade. Ta-da. Got my J.A. Henkel's knives. Straight edge, curved edge, old bird's beak, curved uh, paring knives. And I've got this old ceramic cone that I got from 
a fellow taxidermist who was a member of, believe it or not, Otter, the Ohio Taxidermist Trade Register, which is no longer, no longer uh, in existence. But this is a great ceramic cone. This gets up into the eyes and, oh, it's terrific. It's terrific. There's one other thing I'm going to need to do. Uh, of course, I've got a scissors, my lineman scissors. I've got my hemostats for helping hold small, small fleshy bits that my big fat fingers can't grab anymore. Of course, forceps. And I have a smaller iris scissors for getting into tight places. So, with all this, Oh, and of course, my prerequisite, cup of joe. Ah, the juice of life. <laughs> With all that, let us begin to begin. And I'm going to start with the scalpel. I'm not going to use the point of the scalpel. I'm going to use the body of the blade, the bottom side of the blade, the get in there and start splitting the lips oh one other, one other thing I forgot to mention that glass eye that was in the side of the the eye that was opened to insert the CITES tag, that little glass eye is in here still somewhere. It's in the skin. Um, as I was inverting the skin, it fell into the skin, so it's in there somewhere. I need to fish that out sometime during the course of the day. <laughs> Speaking of which, this is the side where the CITES tag uh, was entered. Now, a little bit of lip skin was cut right here. That is a little bit of, of lip skin that was cut away. but. We go along, we get past that, open up the lips, just like butterfly and a shrimp, as our friend Sally Dames used to tell us, just like butterfly and a shrimp. I'm probably going to change this blade and put a brand new sharp one in. Oh, there we go. there is the lip skin this is where like I say this is where it was cut to insert the CITES tag not a real not a whole lot of damage it doesn't matter if it's going to be a closed mouth otter or an open mouth otter that kind of damage is not a problem if you're an experienced taxidermist and if you're doing one of these animals you should be but I did one back when I was inexperienced and I didn't skin the animal, I bought the tan skin. I, I think I bought it from a local taxidermist who had one, uh, he had one in his shop and he sold it to me for a few bucks. Those were the days when you could, when a, a kid could go in and buy an iris skin for five, ten, fifteen bucks. Can't do that anymore. It was tanned already too. It was a tanned skin. Yes sir. Yes sir. -y. Check against the outside, make sure you're not cutting through where you don't you don't want to cut through, but just check where you're at. Now you see the whiteness on these gums? That's a little bit that's still just still a touch freezer burned. So now with that in mind, I think I will take my paring knife and go down. This is real dry and hard here. And the paring knife will pare it away without, hopefully, <laughs> without slicing through. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep going here. Yeah, nice, nice sharp blade. Yeah, the skin is a little dry. These are things to expect, and I've I've shown you how to deal with it. It's nothing to complain to the seller about. Not like it arrived with four broken legs. This is simply freezer burn. If if you keep a, a whole animal in your own freezer for any length of time, you're going to have you're going to come across the same thing. Mm. 
Now, normally you would just keep going around and around and around the entire mouth until all the lips have been split open. But for this demonstration, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. You've seen the front, the lips at the front of the muzzle opened. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice, I'm hoping it can pick up on camera, I want you to notice all these little nodules, even down here, even down into the lip area, these little bumps, these little nodules. You know what those are? Those are the roots for some of the feeler hairs on the otter's face. Now, there are feeler hairs all around these critters. Their face is loaded with feeler hairs, with whiskers. They're all over. All over. Right down to the lip line. Understanding that will help you to keep them from falling out. Uh, looks like I went through here. Yeah, I went through a little bit. Nothing a little CA glue won't fix. But, in order to split that area, I found I'm going a little too far forward. I need to go further back along the lip line. I say with these feeler hairs, it's a little it's a little tough to tell. Actually, what it is, I've got the lip entirely split. That's the, that's the thing. I got it entirely split. I was splitting too much. I was splitting a little too much. Also, sometimes it's easier to continue splitting the lips after it comes back from the tannery, after it's been wet tanned. Again, wet tanning is best for these little critters if you want to make a mount, because the friction from a tumbler during dry tanning will singe the hair and actually make it look like it's been burnt. Okay, now we're down, we're down to the front of the, good lord, we're down to the front of the lower lip. This is where it was real tight and dry against the, um... Oh no, we're not there yet. What am I saying? Is that it? Where am I? Help me, help me, I'm lost, I'm lost! Oh! I'm going past the whisker roots on the opposite side of the face. I have to stop letting my mind wander. Maybe I'll just stop the oral instructions and you watch. And I'm going to come back on camera when I when I reach the chin. Okay, I've reached the lip skin at the front of the chin, which is right here. Here's the side lips, little lip pockets. Most canine uh, carnivorous animals have that. Otter is no exception. And again, we're just going along gently slowly carefully splitting the lip skin trying like a madman not to go through anymore once was enough this really softened up after being wrapped it's a little dry deep down inside, but not so dry that it cannot be turned and split. I'm not going to go worry about going all the way to the tip right yet. That I will do 
after getting the hide back from the tannery. So much easier to do these splitting lips fully to the very edge after you have a tan skin when everything is a uniform white color. Right now you've got these various shades of brown, blue, no, well not blue, but brown, red, purplish. And the skin is very, very delicate when it's in the raw state. Okay. I think this is good right here. All right. Well done. Well done. You see how lovely that's splitting? There we go. And that's all we need to do at this point. This is all we need with the skull in the raw, uh, the skin in the raw state. Now just a little more I want to get here with a side lip, lip pouch like area is. You want to get it split enough for the salt to get in there and do its job of drawing out all the moisture, drawing out the proteins, the minerals, albumins, which is another type of protein but not quite the same as protein protein. Albumin is the kind of pro protein you find in the in raw egg whites. I don't make you think twice about a uh, Omelet, won't it? Here we go. Okay. Lips are split. I'm going to start now. Continue. I'm going to continue splitting the nose. And for that, I have a, a dowel that I'm going to use. There it is. The eye just dropped. <laughs> oh gosh. The eye just a little the a little extra glass eye just dropped out of the hide. Wonderful. All right, let's insert that tap that Okay, dowel. these are two dowels. Nothing fancy. Uh, I just simply ground down the tips. The flat tips will ground down until I had these uh, little conical shapes on the end. I use them for nostrils, eyes, as an aid to turning noses on small game. Plus, it's great for flamenco dancing. All right, that's enough of that crap. Now, let's get the skin back over here. I think I'll use the larger of the two and set this up. I want to get the point in the center of the nose. And now I want to... I'm going to split the center. Whoops-a-daisy. I'm going to split the center cartilage so that it doesn't look like an angry monster face anymore. Yeah, let's use the scalpel. I don't want to have to press too hard. I don't want to end up going through. 
try and split it right down the middle. If it goes off to one side more than the other, so be it. Now that's split. Okay, that's been split. What we're down to now is the front, or the inside of the front nose pad. And right here is where the filtrum is located. That's that little gap between the, each side of the muzzle. All right, at this point, I'm just going to continue working around, freeing up the nostril skin from the cartilage, both sides. I do a little bit on one side, I turn around, I do the same to the other side. I, like I said, I've said it before, I use the natural nose in my mounts. I do not use plastic noses. Don't believe in it for taxidermy. Not unless a nose has been totally destroyed. And that is so rare. What you can use them for is a reference source, a source of 3D reference. Remembering, however, please people, that they were molded from the nose of a dead animal. And yes, the features of the dead should not be used to represent the features of the living. The features of the dead are dead. And that's all there is to it. Good close-up photos of an otter's nose is what you of a live otter's nose is what you need to succeed. And I just happen to sell those. This is not a commercial for what I do, but it's the true. I have been selling a set of river otter references for the longest time now. For years. This is the side that the CITES tag went through and there's a lot of blood discoloration on this side. Okay, here we go. All right. Whoops. I'm sorry, I keep going off camera. I'm bringing it close to me to work on. So let's bring the camera over this away too. Here we go. How's that? Much better, I'm sure, I hope. All right, now I've got this about as far as I want to get it for a raw skin. The rest of this cartilage will be removed and it's this, the nose thinned after the tanning. What I do want to concentrate on now are the sides of the muzzle. There are tremendous whisker pads here. Now you don't want to just shave the meat off. If you do that, you're going to destroy the roots of the whiskers and your otter's going to be bald faced. So. I'm going to go over the meat, the heaviest of the meat. <clears throat> Got my finger up under the muzzle from the hair side. And I'm going to, as I work the muzzle, I'm going down and up. I'm going in between the roots of the whisker pads. I don't want to open any up. I don't want to remove any. I don't want to destroy any. Now, if your tanner 
has any kind of competency at all, they will be very, 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 very careful shaving the face on your otter. One of the best things you can do is to start separating the rows of whisker roots. It's just a matter of finding the in-between of the whisker roots and slowly and deliberately going in between them with the tip of your blade. Now for this I would not recommend using a scalpel. I would recommend using paring knife. If you don't have any, buy them. This will separate the meat without cutting so far down that you'll go through the skin. Problem with scalpels, scalpels are really made for cutting, like in surgery. So you will in fact slice with a scalpel much better than you will with a paring knife. A paring knife is designed to pare away meat and whatnot of different parts in various stages where a scalpel is meant to cut through. You can see the little nodules, the little bumps, the little whisker root bumps. You can see them. Do 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 do. You go between those bumps in a long row. Go between the rows first. Separate the rows. Okay. Separate the rows. Keep the rows together. And you go right down, right down to the to the hide. Okay. There's a row of whiskers there. There's a row of whiskers here. I'm gonna loosen the top up, the top section of this row here. I see how close to the eye they come? We're right, we're right up to the eye. Again, this is the eyelid on the side of the CITES tag, all right? There's eyelid here, people. The eyelid is here, right here. Full upper and lower eyelid intact, not cut through, all right? There's the musculature that surrounds the eyelids. Now, we're going to go along here and separate the rows. There are rows upon, on top of rows, on top of rows, on top of rows of whiskers. Also known as facial feeler hairs. Scientifically known as vibrace. 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 They pick up vibrations. Now, here's another little row. You know, if you don't believe me, look at the face, turn it right side out, and look for all the feeler hairs. Look for all the whiskers, the vibrasse. Now you see how they, how they all really stand out on this side more than they do on this side? Because the, the, the rows have not been separated yet. So you see they're all really standing out here, even here and here. This is what you need to do more than worry about splitting lips and stuff like that. Well, you have to split the lips, but you need to separate or split the rows of vibrace. Now, this is getting real close to the nose, so I want to be real, real, real aware of where I'm at and what I'm doing. Like so. I think they have more uh, a more dense bundling of whiskers than I think any other mammal. Even mink, and coyotes and foxes, raccoons, they've got their fair share of vibrace as do squirrels. But I think otters you can say the otter 
is otters are the walrus kukukachu. Okay? They are the walrus. Now, you want to separate the meat that holds the rows of whiskers close to the nose. You just want to separate that from the nose structure. All right. Got a few more rows to separate. I'm going to continue doing just what you saw me doing, but off camera. So I can get in there and get it right up to my face. Okay, now that there's heavy, heavy flesh on top of the whisker root rows. You can get in here with your good heavy duty scissor. I hear is a lineman's scissor. Just skim along the top and remove the meat from there without cutting the tips of the whisker roots. The whole thing is being careful. Being aware. Sometimes as you're squeezing the blades together, you'll, you'll see the whisker roots. And what you can do is actually sort of pull the scissors up rather than snip. And by pulling up on the scissor, you're basically essentially stripping the meat from those whisker roots. Now, the way to ensure that your salt gets in between them is to separate. Now, you, you've separated the rows now separate the whisker roots themselves proper okay again with the finger on the outside pushing up from the hair side that allows you to get in here and do a good job separating the individual whiskers Like so. Like so. This is still just one side of the face, folks. This is just one side of the face. But if you want your whisk, uh, your otter to maintain to maintain his whisker collection this is what it takes there's a whisker root right there completely exposed another one they look like little teeny weeny soft bullets and you keep doing this I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna start splitting the eyelids for you on camera at least one of the eyelids and I'm going to start on the eyelid where the CITES tag went through. Okay, here we go. Again, just like splitting the lips. It's just like splitting the eyelids on any other mammal. You go down. You take the ear liner. Oh, uh, the ear liner, I'm sorry. Take the eyelid lining, drag it forward with your thumb or whatever finger you choose to use, and cut along. And now we've got nice eyelid lining coming into focus, I hope. <laughs> and we're going to continue on opening this up. Again, I do not go all the way to the very edge on the eyelids not in the raw state not in the raw state all you need is to allow the salt to penetrate it will it will once the skin has gone through the pickle and the tan and it's toughened up it's a lot easier and a lot safer because this is very this is a very delicate little skin right it's not a deer hide not a deer cape so it's going to be a lot the skin is going to be toughened up 
from the process of tanning. Now I'm doing the lower lid. The lower lid where the CITES tag ran through, which did not actually cut the eyelid, simply cut the, the gum material coming up through the mouth. Which means the entire eyelid structure is here. It is intact. There. Now, anyone who complains that they don't have an eyelid to work with, well, there are plenty of tech schools out there. ITT Tech, for one, is always looking for new students. I will now take my ceramic cone. Push it up through through the eye, eye opening. This will allow me to this will allow me to shave a bit of the heavy tissue from around the eyes. Do it very slowly, very deliberately. Like so. There we are. We go to the back. The back side of the eyelid. And we go like so. Shave it away. Hey, hey, we're shaving it away. Be aware there are feeler hairs all around. They're all over. They're all over. You just want to go a layer at a time. You want to shave the surface layer of meat away. You don't want to go too far down. You don't want to go too deep into here. Okay there. It's a little holder. It keeps it from rolling away and breaking. All right. Now, let's take my scissor and trim the skin just a little bit. Pretty well trims it real well right there. Let's trim the bottom lid. There we go. Our lids have been trimmed away. Trimmed down nice. That's all I need on one of the eyelids. Okay, here is the eyelid all trimmed, split and trimmed. Plenty of eyelid skin all around if you want to use the tuck method. If you simply want to lay the eyelids along the, uh, the clay work on your, on your otter mount, you can do that too. Of course, you would trim it right down to the very line of the eyelids after it's split all the way to the tip. This, is not, this has not been split all the way to the very edge, okay? That still needs to be split to the very edge. And I do that, like I say, I do that after it comes back from the tannery. In fact, my tanner prefers to leave some meat on the faces of animals so that the blade, the round knife, has got something to grab other than just skin. If there's meat there to be plumped and pickled, that will be 
handled by the round knife.